Food is a platform to tell and continue a story. Me as someone who is a maker, a creator, or a chef, or a cook, or whatever you want to call me, is sort of acting as this vessel for my own specific experience. Being a queer person of color in the restaurant industry is really challenging. I think a lot of people make assumptions about your identity. Celebrating my identity was not something that like just happened, it's something that I've had to learn and also I'm, like I'm still learning through this process of having a business. Yardi started as sort of a question that allowed me to investigate my own heritage through food and really think about what it means to exist in the intersections of my own queerness and what it means to be a Jamaican American. Food came about in two very important ways. The first way is that food was a sort of love language between me and my family. Specifically, me and my mother would spend a lot of time watching the Food Network and being like, we can do that. The other part of that would be my dad had a restaurant when I was growing up. He came into that industry without having any experience prior, but was always really hardworking and determined to make something happen. What that meant for me growing up was that I was able to watch a black entrepreneurial person really invest their time in building something that was made and authored by them. I came out to my sister first when I was 12. And I think that the Maroon 5 album, Songs About Jane, came out wrong, around the same time or something. And I remember listening to, <laughs> I think the first half of the album be like, oh my gosh, Adam Levine is so hot. And then I realized that I was like, that's maybe not. <laughs> that's something that I had never really thought about much before. And so I wrote this really long, um, note to my sister and she was like, it's okay, I already knew. And she, in a lot of ways, was my sort of support system in that process. And unfortunately, at the time, my parents weren't as keen to the idea as she was. My dad has shown like a lot of support in what I'm doing, both professionally and personally. So um, we don't really ever talk about my relationships or who I'm dating, but they just really want to support me and to stay open to new experiences and being creative. A lot of the food that we're doing today is really thinking about how to sort of like brighten a very traditionally heavy Jamaican or Caribbean palate. So specifically if you think about like the turmeric rice that we're doing, it's this really sort of like salty, sweet, but also like very earthy dish that is really bright yellow because color is really important to me. There's this really beautiful image that I have of being in Ocho Rios in Jamaica and thinking about people who are selling pepper shrimp. That's just shrimp that's sort of like cooked and then sold in bags. Pepper shrimp is also very similar to how you think about doing like a crab or lobster boil in like Louisiana, like thinking about like really, really strong seafood flavors. This will be salad and bread. This is going to be the squash dish. Okay. This is going to, sorry. Rice, yeah, rice. Condiments are easy, they can just be these. That's cute. So you can see the oil and the... super pretty, yeah. yeah. And then you can dip, like... Yeah. My background in food is really funny. I feel like I never really learned how to cook professionally, and I'm still trying to figure it out in a lot of ways. But I was always really inspired and curious. Actually, my background is in art, and I'm always thinking visually and thinking about how things are composed in any sort of field. I think I was just like doing a project maybe in school one day and decided that I wanted to use food as a component and like host a dinner party to see what sort of dynamics happen at the dinner table. And I think that idea just sort of stuck with me. So a lot of the dinner parties that we do have a performative aspect to them. Nathan. I got some good food, okay? <laughs> we got a buffet going, we got some education, a talk, we got some wine, and you like orange wine, Nathan? Mm -hmm. Colors, I mean, I'm an artist. I hate saying that, but I like art. I appreciate art. I studied art. I think that people gravitate towards color. I think it affects your mood. A lot of the colors that I'm thinking about 
r- remind me of my own queerness, my own sort of like unapologetically bl- bright self or something. Using color and thinking about color in terms of like color and queerness, um, thinking about color as this thing that's about like activism and resistance and like being sort of like really bold and unafraid is something that I think about in our food that we make. I think the Caribbean is a intersection or throughway for a lot of different cultures. And thinking about like Caribbeanism as this really wide thing, right? Thinking about the flavors, those one pot dishes that are very sort of like emblematic of Jamaican tradition and cooking and sort of like expanding that or thinking about like brightness or thinking about the fruit profile or thinking about spice. So like how many places can I put a scotch bonnet in my recipes is really important for me. Yardy feels like a really great place to come to to try out new ideas and really helps me to feel comfortable and excited about my identity and where it can go, but I think there has, it has a lot of growing to do. I'm hoping the next sort of queer Caribbean or queer black American or immigrant person will come along and feel like they have some sort of reassuredness to allow them to like know that they can be whoever they want to be whenever they choose to be that thing. And that there is a space to celebrate and also like thrive in who you're representing through your own desire to be who you are. I'm really like just proud of myself and my team and everyone who considers themselves a part of the Yardi family. I think like if I were to like die tomorrow, my one accomplishment would be knowing that people are excited to see a queer Caribbean business thrive or even tell our story in the first place.